Good afternoon. Today I'm starting a new series called Trash to Treasure here on YouTube. And Jason and I are going to be taking a little uh, road trip up to Michigan. And we're gonna be looking at an antique mall. Along the way, we may stop at some garage sales or thrift stores. And I'm gonna be trying to find three things that I can turn from trash to treasure. It seems to be the thing that uh, most people are interested in and express a lot of interest about that. And I sometimes forget to take you along the process. Most times I forget to do that. So I'm gonna try this here on YouTube and see if this is something that people enjoy seeing how I turn things that other people think are trash into treasures. So come along with me and we'll see what we can find today. I don't know what it is about vintage pictures, but I'm always drawn to them. It's like they tell a story of the past and I feel so nostalgic, like I'm right there. We headed to the thrift store and I found three things very quickly that I could update and make my own. You'll see that I found a lot more than three things, but I'll show some of those in some upcoming videos. After a day of thrifting and antiquing, we headed up for dinner at one of our favorite little small towns along the lake, St. Joe, Michigan. This town always makes me feel like I'm on vacation, even though it's only about an hour and 10 minutes from home. It's all blue and has a yellow eye. And it's bigger. So last weekend we went out, Jason and I found numerous things at garage sales and an antique mall we went to and a thrift store. And in the process of that, I found a truckload of stuff, but I'm showing you three items today that I'm going to challenge myself to repurpose First is this cute vintage mid-century modern greenish yellow chair. I love that color, um, which I think is so cute. There's some nicks in the wood and I think it would look just really cute and updated if it had some paint on it. So I'm going to be chalk painting that piece, not on the fabric, but on the caning. The second piece is a end table, which sell really nicely at my store. People love end tables but it's kind of shiny. So I, for what I have in mind, I hope it sticks. I hope it works. The third piece is a cane rocker. I just love this, so beautiful. It looks like the caning came up in the bottom so a new seat was added. I like the idea of having a softer seat because the cane sometimes can be so hard. So if you're sitting rocking, it's, it's just a little more cozy but they have like a burlap bag, so it kind of takes away from the coziness on it. So I'm gonna put a piece of fabric on that, and I am thinking of using oven cleaner as a strip down method for this. I'm not sure, the rocker's in great shape. So I'll just have to see if the fabric is the only thing I need to change or if I strip down the wood too. Here I'm inspecting the rocker to see if I need to strip it down and I decided that I do need to. 
So because there's so many um, imperfections and there's paint and just some chipping that's going on on the original uh, finish, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Easy Off oven method for this. And I'm just gonna spray this over the entire chair and then I'm going to spray it off. I'll, I'll let it set for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna scrub it and spray it off with a hose and let it dry and see what that does to this. is um, to prepare the furniture is just to wash it with some Dawn soap and I use some Shackley Basic H and just squirt it in a bucket to clean it and just wipe it nice and clean. I got about halfway through this painting it white with a Rust-Oleum chalk paint. It was linen and it was just too white. So I went back and got my trusty varnished clay that I use on a lot of pieces. It's a Valspar paint and I just use that to kind of soften it up. It's got a brown undertint and I just really love that um, look a lot better. So this is what it's looking like after the first coat of paint, and I think it's gonna be really cute. See it maybe sitting at a desk or at a vanity, even as a side, just in a side table and the chair in a, in a room. Uh, so many options for this cute piece. While I was working on painting that, I let this set, and I let it set a little longer than normal. But now I'm going to take a brush and just scrub it real good and then I'm going to rinse it off with my garden hose. So I am trying a new method tonight with a paint gun and Jason has been showing me how to do it. We're just going to do some trial and error here, but he built a little system to clamp the sprayer on here and then he's funneling down the paint into the sprayer. I was going to use a black paint, but I decided since the chair 
um, needs a little side table that maybe I'll just use the same color as I'm painting the chair. So I'm doing a burnished clay on the side table as well. He thinned this paint down until about the consistency of maybe buttermilk, but we're gonna try and see if it's too thick. If it's coming out too thick, then we'll just add a little more water to it. This is the knob that controls the amount of paint that comes out. This one over here controls air pressure. working with the sprayer for some time we finally got it to work and Jason realized that um, it hadn't been cleaned out from the person before us that had it we bought it used so um, cleaned it real good and yeah so this is the first coat I need to do underneath there This is what the rocker chair looks like after sitting overnight and drying. The wood has dried to a nice light color. So I sanded down some spots that still had some remains of the red, but I really love, um, you can see kind of there, the texture and the black. I don't think I need to do anything else except put a clear wax over it. So I'm going to spread Annie Sloan clear wax on top of it all just to protect it a little and give it a real nice smooth finish. I've decided to use a drop cloth. It's a new drop cloth, but I'm going to use this right over the burlap because that gives it a little extra cushion on top of the seat. So I'm just going to cut this out to size and staple it to the back. I'm coming out to look at my chair this morning. I'm going to be putting the second coat on this little chair out here on my porch today because it looks like it could rain outside and I like to be outside painting as long as possible. So I'm going to put my second coat on and then possibly do a glaze on top of it. So this is the end table and I brought it back out here today again and we've just had so much trouble with the sprayer. I think we're gonna get a different sprayer and try it, but for today, I'm just gonna go back to my uh, trusty Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte um, just in a white color. I love to spray with this. I spray a lot of things and um, I've always just used cans, but I am trying to transition. I think it's more economical to use a sprayer if I can. I just know it's a lot of fuss and we want to get the right sprayer. So maybe I'll show that in an upcoming video as I find another sprayer that works better than what, what we had previously. To finish up this chair, I'm going to start with using an Annie Sloan Clear Wax. I love this wax. It's great for putting over any kind of painted surface. It gives it a nice, softer feel. Sometimes when you use chalk paint or a flat paint, it can feel kind of rough on your fingers. So this is nice on the surface. It does change the color just a smidge, especially if I'm doing it on raw wood like you saw with the rocker. It does give it a little different color, so just be aware of that. And then I like to use an antiquing glaze or black glaze, just a little bit to kind of give some definition. There's some cute little corners here. I don't know if you can see that, um, but these corners here would be really great to have some antiquing wax on. So the clear wax actually works as a great medium too. Whenever you're using black wax or antiquing glaze, it's easier to wipe it off if you get too much. 
And so I like to put clear wax on just kind of to protect the surface so that it doesn't soak right down into the wood. So let's get started on the chair. My third and final project I have this end table that I have finally painted up and I am wanting to do a little French farmhouse stencil on the top I have not had much much experience at all with stenciling so this will be different for me but I thought it would be fun to try it I'm using this little pouncer and some little craft paint and I'm going to barely have any black on my brush and I'm just going to stump it on top from the edge of the stencil here to the outside to make sure that the same distance um, was on both sides because I'm doing one on the opposite side as well and then measured out from this way as well measuring between the two to make sure they they line up and then I'll just stomp on this side as well you're just going to want to carefully pull up and not slide it so that you don't get paint underneath it. I did get a little bit of black over here so I'm just going to take a rag and wipe that off. Thanks for coming along with me today. It was my first trash to treasure and it was so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can subscribe to my channel here. I also have a blog called The Jenny Run and I'm on Pinterest as The Jenny Run. On Instagram, I'm Jenny Run Design. So follow me in all those places. I'll have different recipes and things that I do on my blog. 
and then I'm daily on stories on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining me and see you next time. And finally, here's that 1800s vintage art I found over the weekend. I brought it home and I had a frame that fit it exactly. I love when that happens. Thank you.